Mr. Harris. Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Thunder Bay Rainy River. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, Bill C-302 uh, is an act to recognize the injustice that was done to persons of Italian origin through their enemy alien designation and internment during the Second World War and to provide for restitution and promote education on Italian-Canadian history. And, and this is the, uh, I guess this is the fourth time it's been, it's been previously introduced in three sessions of Parliament and I'm very glad to uh, see that it's back and, I, and I'm prepared to, to, uh, to certainly support it. I'll give a little historical background, Mr. Speaker. In 1939, special wartime powers were given to the Canadian Minister of Justice to prevent the subversion of Canadian interests and loyalties. Italian Canadians were designated enemy aliens by the Government of Canada, and following Italy's declaration of war on June 10, 1940, our government ordered the internment of many of these so-called enemy aliens. Between 600 and 700 Italian Canadians were reportedly interned as a result. Most were sent to Camp Petawawa on the Ottawa River. Italian Canadians were required to register with the RCMP and report on a monthly basis. Travel restrictions were imposed. The teaching of the Italian language was declared illegal, as were various Italian organizations. Boycotts of Italian-Canadian-owned businesses, owned and run businesses, started and many Italian-Canadians lost their jobs. Now in 1990, as uh, my, my uh, honorable friend uh, uh, just before me indicated, the National Congress of Italian-Canadians briefed uh, then Prime Minister Mulroney on these injustices and called for an apology and compensation. An apology was delivered. And the money was announced, but it was not delivered. Funding was announced again in June of 2008 through citizen, uh, Citizenship and Immigration Canada's Community Historical Recognition Program. Now, I heard my honorable friend uh, just before me uh, say that, uh, that the Conservatives say this, this bill is shameful. Well, I think that was his exact description. Uh, well, uh, you know, he's talking about money to come, but to date the program's li uh, website lists no funds granted for projects related to the treatment of Italian Canadians during World War II. Let me just talk about uh, briefly about, uh, about Thunder Bay. Uh, we have a very long history in Thunder Bay of Italians, uh, Italian Canadians. The Italian community, in fact, was established in the early uh, part of the 19th century. The 1901 census shows 197 persons of Italian origin uh, in Port Arthur and Fort William combined. By 1931, that community had grown to 2,500 people. And Italian Canadians remain one of the largest ethnic communities in Thunder Bay, indeed one of the largest ethnic communities uh, right across my riding of Thunder Bay Rainy River. Now, I'm a, I'm a, a proud member of the Societe Italiana de Benevolenza, the Principe de Piemonte, and I'm very, uh, very happy to say that uh, just, to, just to illustrate uh, the longevity and how important Italian Canadians have been to Thunder Bay and to my riding, this in fact, uh, this started in 1909. Mr. Speaker, this is the 100th anniversary of that society. And it was started by a small group of Italian immigrants who wanted their heritage to stay alive in this new country that they had come to call their own. Now, the goal of their society was, and, I, and I'll uh, read a quote here, to promote and maintain good fellowship and the highest level of citizenship within members and the community. The further goal of their society was the promotion and enhancement of Italian custom and culture in all its endeavors. Mr. Speaker, this society, and, and I'm sure societies uh, right across this country, Italian societies right across this country, have lived up to these ideals and continue to live up to these ideals and show how valuable this society is, or this, uh, this community is, to Canada. And I'd just like to note that, that in September 1939, three days after German troops had invaded Poland, 
the Principe de Piemonte passed a motion pledging its loyalty to Canada. And yet, of course, I've already outlined the historical background of what uh, happened after that. I'd also like to mention the, uh, the uh, Canadian Italian Business and Professional Association of Thunder Bay. It was incorporated in 1993, and it promotes the recreational, cultural, social, artistic, business, and professional activities of Italian Canadians in Thunder Bay and the surrounding area. It encourages the participation of Italian Canadians in the economic and public affairs of this region and Canada. Mr. Speaker, I think that uh, what, I'm, what I'm really trying to get at here with this description is the importance and the, and the value that all of us, I'm sure, in this house and right across this country, the value that we see not only in our immigrant population in general, but in particular today uh, with our Italian immigrants. And I believe, Mr. Speaker, that Canada would be a much poorer place without the, without the contribution of Italian Canadians. So, Mr. Speaker, I, I'd certainly be willing to, to, to speak with the member after if, in fact, funds have flowed. I, uh, I don't believe they have, as I said on the website. Uh, they list no funds related to, the pro to projects uh, related to the treatment of Italian Canadians in, uh, during World War II. Uh, this, if the Conservatives say this bill is shameful, uh, we, can easily, we can easily pass this bill with the cooperation of everyone in the House uh, and ensure that not only with the apology that's already happened, but also we can ensure that, uh, that the money that has been announced on numerous occasions is finally delivered. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Resuming debate, the Honourable Member from Egg